Hey there. I thought we'd hook up the good old Wii, take a look at a few games. Why? Because Nintendo announced a little while back that they would be shutting down the Wii eShop. It would no longer be possible to buy digital games on the Wii. Now, for most people, it doesn't really mean anything because you probably haven't bought anything on the Wii for some time. And WiiWare never had all that many in terms of exclusives. They had a, a large virtual console, but WiiWare itself, not so many. And some of the things on WiiWare were ported to other platforms. But there were some exclusives on WiiWare that never ended up going anywhere else. And when the eShop closes down, those games will be going away. Well, if you already have them, then you still have them. But if you don't, then... It will no longer be possible to buy those games. So I thought that maybe before that happens, we could take a look at a few things. And if you're curious to know when this is supposed to go down, there are two dates to know of, two dates to keep in mind. The first is March 26, 2018. Uh, what is supposed to happen then is that it's supposed to be the last day that you can add funds to your Wii eShop account. And then the second date is January the 30th, 2019. That is supposed to be the last day you're actually able to buy something on the eShop. Now, if you've already bought something, will you still be able to download it? Uh, apparently, yes, but will that last forever? Who knows? So maybe it would be prudent to get an SD card and just start downloading stuff to that if you have a large Wii digital collection. But as far as what we're doing here right now, I thought we would take a look at a few games. And one thing I just wanted to make special note of is this. It's you, me, and the cubes. You might remember this. This is Kenji Ino's final game before he passed. I'm not going to play this because I already did a video where I played some of this uh, during the Enemy Zero LP. And you can watch that if you want to see what this game is all about. But I wanted to mention it just because it is Kenji Ino's final game, and it only ever came out on WiiWare. Could it ever come out on something else? I don't even know who would be able to do that. So maybe not. As far as what we are actually going to play, I thought we'd take a look at some Konami games. Because Konami, as you probably know, not exactly interested in being a video game publisher anymore. Like they will with some of their big games, like the like Metal Gear, but for something like this, <laughs> Castlevania: The Adventure Rebirth. What are the chances of this being released on another system? Not high. I mean, Konami is not really all that interested in things like this anymore. So. Let's take a look at the Rebirth games. There were three of them on WiiWare. first one we'll take a look at is Castlevania The Adventure. Now, this game is a remake of the Game Boy game, Castlevania The Adventure. And this is a much better version of that game. That first Game Boy game, I, I did not think was very good. Or good at all. This is a much better version of it. So, let's take a look at this. I will press the confirm button to start. Let's go. It's the kind of story you expect from Castlevania. Dracula has appeared after 100 years. A Belmont has to go kill him. We're Christopher Belmont. Let's go. So this game plays as you expect a classic Castlevania to play. Because the Game Boy game was, of course, before the series had changed into what we call Metroidvanias. So this is very much a classic Castlevania. Linear, specific stages, stages end with bosses. We don't go back and forth between levels. And it plays very well. Again, much, much better than the Game Boy game, which I just want to emphasize, I don't, I don't think was good.
All right. I, I powered my whip up. And Chris can shoot fireballs from his whip when it's powered up. That's something exclusive to Christopher, I think. I don't think any other Belmonts were able to do that. That's Christopher's special power. It was like eyeballs falling from the ceiling. I don't remember them in many Castlevania games, but they were in the adventure. The game has good music, as you expect from Castlevania. I mean, that's like that's like the thing that you could always count on, even with the Castlevania games that weren't very good. They had pretty good music. In the best of times, all-time great music. In the worst of times, still pretty good. I cannot jump on these stairs. It will not let me. I don't think I can get through that. Now, I don't know why the Rebirth games only came out... Oh, I got a key. Gonna get that key. What am I gonna do with it? I guess we'll find out. I'm not gonna want to get any items, though, because it will replace that key, so I gotta watch out. But I do wonder why this game, why the Rebirth games in general, were exclusives on WiiWare. Because not... You didn't have many companies releasing exclusives on WiiWare. There were a few, but really not all that many. It's not to say that WiiWare couldn't have ex exclusives. Sure it could. Sure it could. It's just that there tended not to be a whole lot. Here's a boss. It's a giant bat. I'm going to hit it and it turns into smaller bats. And then I'm going to hit it again. You know, one reason that I think that WiiWare didn't have many exclusives was the size requirement. Games had to be small. I forget what the size requirement was exactly, but what I do know is that this is a locked door, and we can use that key to open it up. Otherwise, I would have had to go upstairs, take the long way around. Now, I can take a shortcut. And there's all kinds of fish jumping out of the water, and they're like a big jellyfish, I guess, killing the fish. So what's going on down there, I think? But yeah, we wear... It had much smaller size requirements, size restrictions, I should say, than Xbox Live Arcade or PSN. So, you release a game on WiiWare, it was going to have to be pretty small. That was fine for uh, virtual console games. But if you wanted to release, you know, a full-size game, which was uh, like a modern game at the time, well... It was a little bit of a problem. Especially since the Wii did not have especially large uh, internal memory. I don't know exactly how much it had, but if you really wanted to have a, like a number of games on the Wii, you really did need to get an SD card. Here's a big eyeball. We're going to bounce it around. It's like a big old Super Ball. And I don't think real eyeballs are, like, bouncy. I, I tend to think that they're probably, like, squishy. Like, if you had an eyeball in your hand, you wouldn't bounce it off the wall. It would just kind of splatter. So, I mean, let's not think about that, because that's kind of disgusting. This eyeball bounces around. And we killed it. And here comes an orb from the sky as... Yep, there we... Oh, I didn't get the animation quite right. I wanted his whip to be extended. But that's okay. That's not bad. We could go on to the next level, go further up Castlevania, where a man who changes into a larger man is waiting for us. That's what that map says, anyway. And new music plays, and again, it's still pretty good. But, we're gonna go back to the Wii menu. Now, these games are pretty short. They're not meant to be lengthy, they're, like, meant to be games that you replay, you know. Like a an old-style Castlevania game, they were not long. Nor was a game like Gradius. So these Rebirth games are not especially long either. Now this, like Castlevania The Adventure, is a remake. It's a remake of the first Gradius. I never really played the first Gradius much. But, you know, I don't remember it having all this story, like, you know, the Silent Nightmare incident. You remember that, right? 
we all, we'll always remember the Silent Nightmare incident where this green moon changed to red. Actually, it's not a moon. It's uh, it's the planet Antikathon, which it's a pretty good name. It fell silent. No one knew what happened to it. Everyone was concerned. Here's Dr. Venom. You know, the memorable characters from Gradius. The mother computer of the planet Antikathon was infected by Bacterians, so we have to go kill it. Let's go. And now, yeah, the Vic Viper, of course, that name of the ship was in the first game. I don't know if we ever knew the name of the pilot, Special Colonel James Burton. Now, like I said, I, I never played the first game very much, so I don't know how much of a remake this is. Uh, the game that I played quite a bit was Life Force on the NES. I really like that one. And that, of course, was a port of the arcade game Salamander. But the first Gradius, not so much. Not so much. Anyway, I believe the story is now coming to an end, and we can now begin the game. Or so you thought. There's more story. Here we go. We have to get the proper context of what we're doing in Gradius. Like, we have to watch the news and see about how the Gradius is developing next-gen fighter, and signs of Devil's Return in Gleek Kingdom. Oh, and Dream Continent Adventure reaches South Pole. But there's an emergency. Like, maybe we could go back and learn more about that devil, about the reappearance of the devil. No, we're not going to know about that. We're going to hear about the planet Antikathon. Hey, that's us. We're the military. It's time to assess. And here is our ship's computer which I believe that is just Metal Gear from Snatcher. That's like its actual head. I don't know if that's just a copy of the sprite, but it looks pretty close. Anyway, James and Venom are talking. Venom has a mission. We have a mission too. We have to assess, which means we're going to shoot things because that's what we do in Gradius. We must obliterate it. And that's fine, because what else do we do but destroy things? It's kind of our job. What happens if we fail? We don't know. Dr. Venom out. Well, let's head over to Antikathon. Kill that brain. Our job is to get things done. We're a man of action, not of thought. We don't think about things. We shoot things. Let's do it. In our ship. Surprising amount of story and cinematics for Gradius. Destroy them all! Destroy them all? That's what we do. Let's kill everything in our spaceship. I'm going to take this speed up, because our default speed is very slow. So it plays like Gradius, and you probably know what Gradius plays like. Laser! take this laser. You probably played a little bit of Gradius. Some Gradius game at some point. It's kind of inevitable. Missile. And I'll take this missile. And all the Rebirth games, you know, they look good. They sound good. Have good music. Good remixes of the original tracks. Oh, it's winter. Laser. Winter has come. That's what I guess happened there. Missile. And by the way, if you're wondering, I'm playing the game using the classic controller Pro, which I always thought was a very good controller, but I never used it a whole lot. I didn't have too much on the Wii to use it with. Multiple. 
I guess you could also play these games by holding the Wiimote on its side. That was always an option, but I never liked to do that. Oh, slow down. Gradius Rebirth is too much for the Wii. Well, I mean, Gradius does have an illustrious history of slowdown, doesn't it? Which you might remember if you played Gradius 3 on the Super Nintendo. Destroy the core. That's what you do in Gradius. You have to destroy the core. Core is blocked by things. You shoot the things to expose the core, but we have to get in harm's way, have to get in the way of these shots, and dodge the shots to shoot the core. Core's exposed. There we go. Core destroyed. And it continues on, the way Gradius does. We're not really going into like a, uh, it, the screen doesn't turn black and we go into a new stage, but rather we just sort of fly into the next stage. It's very continuous. And you know, I think the, th I said that I never played the first Gradius, and I think that kind of the thing that turned me off of it was the way that you could be doing really well and getting a lot of power-ups, but when you die, you'll then appear close by to where you died, but you'll have no power-ups, and things will get very hard because you don't have any power-ups. You have to now do the thing that killed you, except you have nothing. And I think that's the thing that I never liked about it. Like, it's, I guess it sounds weird to say that I would rather it just start you over uh, back further. But if it did, it would at least that would give you the opportunity to get some weapons. So you could give another crack at the thing that killed you, instead of having to do it with no weapons. This bit here does remind me of Life Force. With the organic walls and such. And actually playing this now, I'm not actually sure about what I said before, about it being a remake of the first Gradius. Since I played so little of the first Gradius. Like, I have no way of knowing just how close this is to it, or maybe this is very new. Like, all new content? I don't know, actually. I mean, I can compare Castlevania The Adventure Rebirth to the Game Boy game, because I played that. But, uh... I don't know about this. See, I'm doing very well right now, because I'm all powered up. But if I died and had to do this with no power-ups, I mean, I wouldn't be doing so well. All those things drop power-ups, but you don't... It's kind of hard to actually get behind them so you can shoot them. Well, maybe that's enough for Gradius Rebirth. Don't really have much more to say about it. Just that, you know, plays fine. Looks good, sounds good. As do the other Rebirth games. I'll just get by this. Yeah. Uh oh! Sounds like there's a boss coming. All right, let's just let's just do this. It's a big, disgusting boss. We have to shoot the eye. See, I died. Now what happens? 
No, actually, it did send me back kind of a bit. I thought it would just be right at the boss. Let's head back to the menu. Oh, and by the way, you might notice that the Wii menu is being displayed in 4x3. That's because these games aren't 4x3, and they will look a lot crisper if you have the Wii set to 4x3 instead of 16x9. Uh, because if you set it in 16x9, then the Wii will still display the game in 4x3, but it'll squish it to do so. But if you have the Wii set to 4x3, it just displays it natively. But enough about enough tech talk. It's time for Contra Rebirth. Contra Rebirth, I believe, is a completely new game. It's not a remake of anything, but it is heavily based on Contra 3. In terms of the look and feel, I mean. But it is completely new. There is also a story with this. The type of in-depth story you expect from Contra. What is this place? Oddly, that's the only voice acted line, at least here at the beginning of the game. I don't know why they bothered to voice that one line and nothing else. Anyway, we're Bill Riser. One of, and he's a Contra. I don't remember the heroes in the first games being called Contra. It was just the name of the game. I don't remember it being referring to anything. But we're a Contra. Here's the Galactic President. And we have a mission. Chief Salamander does not ring any bells, unfortunately. But we have to kill him with his Neo, Neo Salamander Force. We got Contra. We don't have to worry about those Neo Salamanders. Anyway, we're killing aliens, which is kind of what you do in Contra. It's time for the legendary Contra to be reborn. That's right. Let the legend live again. I'm going to confirm it. Confirm that the legend lives again. There's more story. It takes place in Contra year 2633. Except no, it takes place in 1973 AD because Neo Salamander forces led by Chief Salamander went back in time to before the humans had all this technology. They went back to the 70s when humans were weaker. So they're going to go back in time and kill the Contra. Zelos Force, I assume that's a Life Force reference. Now, when, when it said Galactic President, I don't know if that meant that the Galactic President in the future decided to dispatch Lance Bean to the past, or if he did, why did the past not change instantly when the Neo Salamander forces went... I don't know. And Lance disappeared. So Bill has to go. Anyway, here's Bill. Since we don't have Lance, we could pick Yagyu. I guess we'll just go with Bill. Let's party! Let's party. Area 1. All right. Looks familiar, sounds familiar, plays familiar. I got the spread gun. It gives you the spread gun as the very first power-up in the game. They know what you want. They know that if you've played Contra, you want the spread gun. So they just give it to you. Now at the top of the screen, you might notice that you have two weapons. You can switch back and forth between them, and that is like a, a very... Oh, I did not see that shot coming at me. Switching between the weapons is a very Contra 3 thing. It's like a lot of chaos on the screen, so it's easy to miss these little shots coming. Also, those shots are pink, so if you played Cuphead, you might have the urge to try to jump into it. Do not, do not jump into the pink shots. You cannot parry them in Contra. And again, good music. I like the remix. All of these Rebirth games are quality products, is what I'm saying. Which is why I wanted to show them. Just ran right into that. Why did I do that? Ran right into that brain plant. Why are there brain plants? Why would plants have brains? The alien plants do. I can't question it.
of destroyed it, and with it, the alien ship. But we still have a boss yet to go. Probably should use the spread gun there. Such a beast is no problem for Bill Riser, member of the Contra. Here's Brownie, the robot. Brownie's also a Contra. I don't remember if this is the same robot that was in Contra Hardcore, but kind of looks familiar. No problem, good little girl. We just kicked that robot's head right off its body. And in the background, Dr. Venom is saying, I just... I, I just... He doesn't know. Also, how does Dr. Venom exist at, at this point in time? You'd think Dr. Venom would be living in the future. In the Gradius timeline. But no, he's here. I don't know how he's here. The storyline of Contra has questions that I don't know the answers to. We must learn more about the deep lore behind Contra. But yeah, if you play Contra 3, The Alien Wars on Super Nintendo, this might be giving you some familiar vibes. Oh, that guy jumped on me and I died. But Bill doesn't care. For him, it's always time to party. Got killed by that bird. Alien bird. I knew it was coming. It got me anyway. Not paying attention. Now I lost my weapons. That's okay for Bill Riser, though. He's good with just his machine gun that he, he that he's born with. He was born with that machine gun. So when he comes back to life, he has it in his hand. Who are you to question Bill Riser and his ever-present machine gun, which is part of his biology? He has the option to carry other weapons, but... If he doesn't have anything, he can just use his biological machine gun, and he's fine. Okay, time for the showdown with this robot. We knocked its head off. It's still working, even though it doesn't have a head.
I think what happened there was its head fell after we kicked it off. It finally fell on it and destroyed it. Here's the enemy. It's Chief Salamander. The sketch is a mere guess. The sketch artist just heard the name was Chief Salamander and his imagination went wild. I don't think this is a valuable sketch. Like, I I don't think that that... Just because his name is Chief Salamander doesn't mean he has to look like that. Is all I'm saying. Let's go back to the Wii menu. So those are the three Rebirth games put out by Konami. Only on WiiWare. Um, never came out on anything else. And since Konami, like I said, not especially interested in putting out video games. Smaller video games anyway. Unlikely they would ever release this on anything else. There's also one other thing I wanted to look at though. It's this. So this is not a virtual console game. Of course, no, this is not a WiiWare game. What it is is a virtual console game. TurboGrafx-16 virtual console game. But that's not really correct. They shouldn't say that. This didn't come out for the TurboGrafx-16. It came out for the PC Engine. Because it only came out in Japan. Castlevania Rondo of Blood. The reason I want to show this is that I think the only Western release this game ever had was on the Wii Virtual Console. I don't think it was included in any other Castlevania compilation. It wasn't released on the Wii U Virtual Console. You can always get it for the TurboGrafx... I'm sorry, you can always get it for the PC Engine, or you could play it through emulation. But as far as actually getting, actually buying this thing, I think this was the only way, the only release this ever got in the West. So we're going to play it since you won't be able to buy this one either. So this was a PC Engine game, CD game. We're going to reset, go back to the beginning. I don't know why this never came out in the West, because at the time, Castlevania was big, it was popular. And this would have been quite a get for the TurboGrafx-16, so I have no idea why this never came out. It's considered to be one of the best Castlevania games. For that side, lebten die Menschen glücklich und zufrieden. Niemand bemerkte den Schatten, der sich langsam über ihnen ausbreitete. Die Dunkelheit trübte ihre Sinne und das Böse fraß sich tief in ihre Seelen. Vom Wahnsinn getrieben schmiedeten sie einen Pakt mit dem Teufel. Zu später Stunde kamen sie zusammen, um gemeinsam die Mächte der Finsternis mit ihrem sündigen Blut zu rufen. Sie zu erlösen von ihrer sterblichen Existenz, den Anbeginn einer neuen Welt vor Augen. Und so begab es sich dass nach 100 Jahren das Böse wieder Fleisch geworden war. Als unsterbliches Geschöpf der Nacht kam es die Gestalt des Wolfs, der Fledermaus oder des Nebels annehmen. Es labt sich am Blut der Menschen. Dracula, der Fürst der Finsternis, Herr des Teufelsschlosses, ist auferstanden. So when I said this never got a Western release, I, yeah, I mean it's not in English. Fortunately enough, is in English. Push run button? I don't want to, I mean, I might push play on their videos, but we're going to push on the Wii controller. I'm going to push start because there is no run button on this controller. But on the Turbo Graphics, there was. The start button was called the run button. We're going to press that. Creaky doors opening. Let's uh, delete that name and just see the beginning of it. If this music sounds familiar, it's because this was in Symphony of the Night as well, which makes sense because Symphony, Symphony of the Night was the direct sequel to this game.
You don't mess with Richter Belmont. Those monsters did, and you saw what happened to them. Richter's on his way. The town is being attacked by creatures of darkness. Here we go. Here he is. He's going. But even though you shouldn't mess with Richter Belmont, maybe there's one person who will. And he's coming this way. <laughs> yeah, it's death. He's here. Broke his scythe. That's right. What does death think about that? Oh, backflip over that. Richter's got moves. Death tips his hat. I su I'm assuming he's saying that we're going to meet again. Anyway, the town has been overrun with Donkey Kong skeletons. We have to fight them. I can jump on these stairs. I forget what the first game was that let you do that. Was, did they let you do that in 3? Castlevania 3? I don't remember now. But they let you do it here. I mentioned that the game is a CD game, and you can tell from the music. Also, one touch I really like is that the town is from Castlevania 2. Here's a sign. We can read it. There you go. I don't know what that says. But you can read the sign, which is nice. Because you could read them in Castlevania 2. Oh. So I, I really liked Castlevania 2 when I was young, even though a lot of people don't like it and say it's a bad game. I really liked it myself, so I liked the reference to this Castlevania 2 town in this game. This game, I think, was the first one that started using these sprites that would go on to be reused many times in future Game Boy Advance and DS games. Those, hand those handheld games were quite famous for reusing sprites, and I think this was the first time that those sprites appeared. Hold on. Ugh, backflip over that. You wouldn't think a whip would do a whole lot to a rock monster, but it is a magic whip after all. Kills vampires, could also probably kill rock monsters. Here's a boss. You can tell from the music and also that dragon flying in the background. We can see Castlevania ominous in the distance. That's our destination. But first, we have to fight a dragon and many things before we get to that castle. This seems like it would be a lot harder if I didn't have this axe. So it's a good thing I have it. We killed a Castlevania boss, which means that the red orb appears. The red orb appears. Yeah, there we go. Red orb appears, and we jump to catch it. And jump and whip. There we go. So this game is basically known as the last basically the last classic Castlevania before Symphony of the Night came out and sort of changed what Castlevania was. Well, I say the last, but I think Bloodlines may have come out a little bit after this. But still, Bloodlines was very much uh, the old-style classic Castlevania. This game does, even though it's classic, it does have some alternate paths. It does have some cutscenes, it does have some dialogue, so it did have things that would be expanded upon when Castlevania turned into Metroidvanias. 
Baker's Axe Knight. This is definitely a sprite that was reused in many games. We killed it. Here's the drawbridge. You might wonder why a non-English game was released on the on the U.S. Uh, virtual console, but I think that just had to do with how much demand there was for this game to be released. I mean, that seems like... It always seemed to me like that was the best use for the virtual console, to release games that never actually got uh, a wide release back when it was new. Like, yeah, you can buy Super Mario Brothers, you can buy The Legend of Zelda on the Virtual Console, and that's good, but there's so many other ways to play that. Whereas with this, there's just... There's, like, one one way. Play it on PC Engine, or, you know, you could, you could emulate it, sure, but I'm talking about official ways now. So it was really cool that to see this actually get a, uh, a virtual console release. Anyway, here comes a big monster. It's angry. It's charging. Got to get away. But first, let's see. Yep, there it is. I got a key. Much like in Castlevania, the Adventure Rebirth. Found a key. I can open a locked door with it. So I don't want to pick up any other items. Otherwise, I'd lose that key. Richter, like all Belmonts, Richter cannot hold one more, one, more than one item at a time. He can't hold a knife and a key. Come on. He can't do that. Look at this monster. It killed itself. All it had to do was slow down and not run into that. But it ran into it. Here's Fishmen. They all, uh, we know that they always hang out in Dracula's basement. But what are we going to use this key for? Well, there's a locked door right here. What's inside? It's Shaft. Get out of here, Shaft. <laughs> so that's Maria Renard. We, you might remember from Symphony of the Night. She's quite a bit different in that game. She's aged a few years. In fact, you might say that if you didn't know that was her, you wouldn't recognize her in Symphony of the Night. Boss music is playing. And this is the room that we fought a boss, the first boss in, in the first Castlevania. It was a giant bat. Do we fight a boss in here now? No, we go to the next room. Because in the next room... Martial Arts Wolfman is waiting for us, and he's pretty intense. Here he comes. So Martial Arts Wolfman... You know, wolf werewolves not really known for their, like, their incredible agility and being able to, you know, fly all around, creating auras of energy around them as they flip and just like wall jump all over the place
So yeah, he's a, he's a pretty special wolf man. Oh, I tried to get in position to hit him. I should not have done that. I should have just kept to the right a little bit more. Let's give that another go. Why not? I'll now have full health, so maybe I'll be able to survive long enough to just whittle his health down while he does the same to me. I mean, granted, Castlevania always did take quite some liberties with traditional monsters, Dracula, a lot more powerful in the cast in Castlevania than he usually is portrayed. So I guess it's not too much of a surprise that the Wolfman is just like the Street Fighter character. Almost. There we go. Oh, tried to get me with a final desperation move, but I wasn't there. He's dead. He gives up his red orb, which we will collect. So that's it, I think, for Castlevania Rondo of Blood. Oh, I should mention, I was saying that this only got a Western release. This was, uh, I mean, a version of this was released for the Super Nintendo called Dracula X, but basically everyone considers that to be a far inferior version to this. Um, so much so that they're, you wouldn't really consider them to be the same game. Yeah, you wouldn't consider Dracula X to be a Super Nintendo version of this. This is considerably better. And I have no idea, again, why this was never released in the West. This seems like it would have been a no-brainer, considering the popularity of Castlevania at the time, and how much this might have been able to help the Turbo Graphics. I don't know. But, that is Castlevania Rondo of Blood, and that has been four games that are available to buy digitally on the Wii, um, that will soon not, no longer be available. And, uh... Those were three WiiWare games and one virtual console game. I think that I will start to take a look at a few more WiiWare games as the weeks go on, see what else was put out on WiiWare and never anything else that, uh, you know, might be worth our time to look at. So, until then, I don't know I, I don't know what you'll do until then. I know what I'll do is I'll probably take a look at WiiWare and see what's available there and come back with another video as to what might be might be interesting. I don't know how to end this video. I'm just kind of babbling right now. Why am I doing that? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how to end this.